안녕하세요. 에린입니다. 다섯 가지 원칙, 일곱 가지 행동을 통해 일반 성인이 외국어를 6개월 만에 배울 수 있다. 이렇게 소개하는 비디오가 있습니다. 외국어 공부 시 중요 요소를 잘 짚어주셔서 여러분과 공유하고 싶습니다. 설명을 원하시지 않는 분들은 핵심만 제가 더보기란에 정리해 두었으니까 바로 가서 보시면 됩니다. How can you speed up learning? 아주 어릴 적부터 이런 고민을 하던 한 사람이 있었습니다. 11살 때 구소련 연구자들에게 수면 학습법에 관해 물어보는 편지를 보내기까지 합니다. 바로 이분입니다. 아이디어는 좋았지만 효과는 없었다고 합니다. 그러나 수면 학습법은 이분에게 다른 분야의 연구를 위한 문을 열어주는 계기가 되는데요. 바로 심리학이었죠. 그 심리학을 공부하면서 첫 번째로 했던 학습에 관한 질문. 어떻게 하면 빨리 배울까에 대한 해답을 찾습니다. 함께 보시죠. In 1981, I took myself to China and I decided that I was going to be native level in Chinese inside two years. Now, you need to understand that in 1981, everybody thought Chinese was really, really difficult and that a Westerner could study for 10 years or more and never really get very good at it. And I also went in with a different idea, which was taking all of the conclusions from psychological research up to that point and applying them to the learning process. What was really cool was that in six months, I was fluent in, in Mandarin Chinese, and it took a little bit longer to get up to native. 6개월 만에 중국어를 유창하게 한다. 그래서 찾아보니까 정말로 이분이 중국어로 이 비디오와 같은 내용의 강의를 하시더라고요. But I looked around and I saw all of these people from different countries struggling terribly with Chinese. I saw Chinese people struggling terribly to learn English and other languages. And so my question got refined down to how can you help a normal adult learn a new language quickly, easily, and effectively? The question is, how do you do that? Well, it's actually really easy. You look around for people who can already do it. You look for situations where it's already working, and then you identify the principles and apply them. It's called modeling. And I've been looking at language learning and modeling language learning for about 15 to 20 years now. And my conclusion, my observation from this is that any adult can learn a second language to fluency inside six months. 자, 이렇게 이분이 이야기를 하면 주의 반응은 미친 것 아니냐, 왜 불가능한 이야기를 하느냐 한다는 거예요. 그래서 인류 진보의 역사를 보여주며 사람들이 주어진 한계를 어떻게 극복해 확장시켰나 예를 듭니다. 또한 미신 두 가지, 언어에 대한 재능, 그리고 현지에 살아야만 그 언어를 잘할 수 있다고 믿는 편견. 그러나 실제로는 언어를 배우는 것과 크게 상관이 없다라는 설명을 합니다. So, what are the five principles that you need to pay attention to first? The four words, attention, meaning, relevance, and memory. And these inter interconnect in very, very important ways, especially when you're talking about learning. Come with me on a journey through a forest. You go on a walk through a forest, and you see something like this, marks on a tree. Maybe you pay attention, maybe you don't. You go another 50 meters, and you see this. You should be paying attention. Another 50 meters, if you haven't been paying attention, you see this. And at this point, you're paying attention. And you've just learned that this is important, it's relevant, because it means this. And anything that is related, any information related to your survival, is stuff that you're going to pay attention to, and therefore you're going to remember it. If it's related to your own personal goals, then you're going to pay attention to it. It's relevant, you're going to remember it. So the first rule, first principle for learning a language is focus on language content that is relevant to you, which brings us to tools. We master tools by using tools, and we learn tools the fastest when they're relevant to us. So let me share a story. A keyboard is a tool. Typing Chinese a certain way, there are methods for this, that's a tool. I had a colleague many years ago who Went to night school, Tuesday night, Thursday night, two hours each time, practicing at home. She spent nine months, and she did not learn to type Chinese. And one night we had a crisis. 
we had 48 hours to deliver a training manual in Chinese. And she got the job. And I can guarantee you, in 48 hours, she learned to type Chinese because it was relevant, it was meaningful, it was important. She was using a tool to create value. So the second principle for learning a language is to use your language as a tool to communicate right from day one, as a kid does. When I first arrived in China, I didn't speak a word of Chinese. And on my second week, I got to take a train ride overnight. I spent eight hours sitting in the dining car talking to one of the guards on the train. He took an interest in me for some reason. And we just chatted all night in Chinese. And he was drawing pictures and making movements with his hands and facial expressions. And piece by piece by piece, I understood more and more. But what was really cool was two weeks later, when people were talking Chinese around me, I was understanding some of this. And I hadn't even made any effort to learn that. What had happened, I'd absorbed it that night on the train, which brings us to the third principle. When you first understand the message, then you will acquire the language unconsciously. So comprehension works. Comprehension is key. And language learning is not about accumulating lots of knowledge. In many, many ways, it's about physiological training, speaking takes muscle. You've got 43 muscles in your face. You have to coordinate those in a way that you make sounds that other people will understand. And the final principle is state, psychophysiological state. If you're sad, angry, worried, upset, you're not going to learn, period. If you're happy, relaxed, in an alpha brain state, curious, you're going to learn really quickly. And very specifically, you need to be tolerant of ambiguity. If you're one of those people who needs to understand 100% every word you're hearing, you will go nuts because you'll be incredibly upset all the time because you're not perfect. If you're comfortable with getting some, not getting some, just paying attention to what you do understand, you're going to be fine, you'll be relaxed, and you'll be learning quickly. So based on those five principles, what are the seven actions that you take? Number one, listen a lot. I call it brain soaking. You put yourself in a context where you're hearing tons and tons and tons of the language, and it doesn't matter if you understand it or not. You're listening to the rhythms. You're listening to patterns that repeat. You're listening to things that stand out. Ponards, so just soak your brain in this. The second action is you get the meaning first, even before you get the words. And you go, well, how do I do that? I don't know the words. Well, you understand what these different postures mean. Human communication is body language in many, many ways. So much body language. From body language, you can understand a lot of communication. Therefore, you're understanding, you're acquiring through comprehensible input. The third action, start mixing. You probably have never thought of this, but if you've got 10 verbs, 10 nouns, and 10 adjectives, you can say 1,000 different things. Right? Language is a creative process. What do babies do? OK, me, but, now. OK, that's how they communicate. So start mixing, get creative, have fun with it. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to work. And you, when you're doing this, you focus on the core. What does that mean? Well, with every language, there's high frequency content. In English, 1,000 words covers. 85% of anything you're ever going to say in daily communication. 3,000 words gives you 98% of anything you're going to say in daily conversation. You've got 3,000 words, you're speaking the language. The rest is, is icing on the cake. 여러분, 이분이 지금 중요한 말씀을 하셨는데요. 실제로 외국에서 일상적인 대화 시 사용되는 단어 수는 생각보다 많지 않습니다. 500개의 단어만으로도 여행은 가능하고요. 1,000개 단어를 알고 있다면 일반적인 대화도 충분히 가능합니다. 구글에서 1,000 most common English words 이렇게 검색을 하시면 다양한 정보를 담은 사이트를 보실 수 있어요. 앞에 숫자는 맘대로 바꾸시면 됩니다. 10개, 25개, 50개, 1,000개, 3,000개, 6,000개 다 있습니다. And when you're just beginning with a new language, start with your toolbox, week number one. In your new language, you say things like, how do you say that? I don't understand. Repeat that, please. What does that mean? All in your target language. You're using it as a tool, making it useful to you. It's relevant to learn other things about the language. By week two, 
you should be saying things like me, this, you, that, give, you know, hot, simple pronouns, simple nouns, simple verbs, simple adjectives, communicating like a baby. And by the third or fourth week, you're getting into what I call glue words. Although, but, therefore, these are logical transformers that tie bits of a language together, allowing you to make more complex meaning. At that point, you're talking. And when you're doing that, you should get yourself a language parent who's somebody interested in you as a person who will communicate with you essentially as an equal, but pay attention to help you understand the message. The sixth thing you have to do is copy the face. You've got to get the muscles working right so you can sound in a way that people will understand you. 이 부분은 정말 저도 많이 느꼈는데요. 우리나라 분들은 주로 입 부분만 움직여서 말씀을 하시잖아요. 그런데 영어를 하는 미국 사람들의 경우 얼굴의 근육을 정말로 많이 씁니다. 그리고 입을 많이 찢고 이렇게 많이 벌리죠. 안면 근육의 움직임에 따라 발음이 달라지거든요. And the final idea here, the final action you need to take is something that I call direct connect. What does this mean? Well, most people learning a second language sort of take the mother tongue words and the target words and go over them again and again in their mind to try and remember them. Really inefficient. What you need to do is realize that everything you know is an image inside your mind, it's feelings. If you talk about fire, you can smell the smoke, you can hear the, the crackling, you can see the flames. So there are five principles that you need to work with, seven actions. If you do any of them, you're going to improve. And remember, these are things under your control as the learner. Do them all. You're going to be fluent in the second language in six months. Thank you. 정말로 긴 비디오 잘 보셨습니다. 자, 한 장에 정리했습니다. 다섯 가지 원칙. 첫째, 자신과 관련 있는 내용에 집중하기. 정말로 중요한 시작 포인트입니다. 둘째, 언어를 도구로 사용해 첫날부터 바로 소통하기. 셋째, 메시지를 이해하면 무의식적으로 그 언어를 배우게 된다. 넷째, 언어는 생리학적 훈련이다. 다섯 번째, 심리 생리학적 상태. 일곱 가지 행동. 첫 번째, 많이 듣기. 두 번째, 단어를 찾아보기 전에 먼저 의미를 이해하기. 세 번째, 단어 섞어 쓰기. 네 번째, 핵심에 중점을 두기. 다섯 번째, 언어 부모를 찾기. 여섯 번째, 얼굴 모양 따라하기. 일곱 번째, 직접적 연결. 오늘은 여기까지 할게요. 6개월이라는 기간 때문에 부정적인 코멘트가 있기도 하지만 언어 공부의 핵심을 잘 정리해 주셨어요. 많은 분이 실제로 본인의 경험에 비추어 공감된다고 하시고 이분의 열정에 동기부여를 받았다고 하네요. 사람마다 주어진 상황이 다르고 또 성향도 다르죠. 나의 백을 언어 배우는 데에 전념할 수 없는 게 현실이잖아요. 그러니 행여나 스트레스는 받지 마세요. 다만 여기 소개된 내용을 최대한 적용하셔서 외국어 공부에 도움이 되었으면 합니다. 감사합니다.